Virgo, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you. No particular subject, we're gonna do my version of a Celtic cross. At the end, there will be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Ven Venus, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your sixth house, this could be for you. You know the drill, guys. Thank you for all the support. However it comes, liking, sharing, subscribing, Cross watchers, you are more than welcome. Message may well be for you. All the information is in the description box. Just hit the more button below. Okay, Virgo, what's going on? Let's do one more. We have, ooh, the Ace of Cups. Beautiful. This is unconditional love. This is a, an offer of love. This is distillation. Okay. The six, interestingly, Virgo's, if, if, if we look at frequency, the frequency of Virgo is, is like 336 three, hertz and it's connected with the sixth stage of alchemy and the process of distillation. Um, so distillation is like when the, the refined and purified aspects is, is like filtered even further. So in a spiritual context, that's kind of like just purifying those last bits. During this stage, it's really important that you remain kind of, but think of, of the process of distillation. So think of, you know, spirits, how they how they do the distillation. It's heated to um, a, a, an extreme temperature to, you know, break up the particles. That's kind of what's going on here. So if we take the impact of heated, this could be chaos, you know, circumstances, whatever it is. And it's really important at this stage to master yourself by not reacting, to staying present, to being calm in chaos. I don't think it's particularly bad chaos. I just feel like there's going to be some sort of shedding of the skin, you know, getting in that last bit um, to get rid of that last, uh, that, that last layer. Just, second and third filtration you know the more purified they are the more that you open your heart the more that the good stuff can come so it feels like there's a distillation that's taking place here and what we do with distillation is we take the wisdom gained through the trials and tribulations that you've gone through in your life extract the purest parts of ourselves and then we can remain un unperturbed by uh, any events that unfold crossing your <laughs> It's a shedding of the energy. Root of the matter. Recent past. Yeah. This, this is like extra filt filtration. I, I, I think you're basically we're going to lead to a really open, open heart. Don't be surprised if the Three of Swords is in the outcome. And it, it won't be there for the reason of pain and suffering. It'll be there because the extended, I'm using the after tarot where the swords have fallen away. Um... It, this feels like it's a, this is a process of, 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 um, of purification. What you want, <laughs> what's coming in, how you see yourself, how others see you, perfect. Advice, <laughs> I love it. Um, potato, oh, fantastic. Nice. Nice. Wow. Guys, just let this process take place. Ace of Swords, bottom of the deck. We've got three aces here. With the Nine of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, the Lovers, Page of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Page of Cups, Four of Swords, Queen of Swords, Page of Swords. So there's a lot of um, energies of, of pages and queens. So there could be a lot of um, distractions, confusions, maybe buttons being pushed, etc., etc. So, the Ace of Cups. In the crossing position is the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is Saturn in Sagittarius. Saturn is the world, the final card of the Major Arcana. What's Sagittarius in the Tarot? It's Temperance. Temperance represents alchemy. This is the last stage. Before, before that sort of conclusion of your alchemical process, this is that filtration process now. And it's like, the Ten of Wands is bogged down energy. It's like letting this just shed out. Root of the matter is the three of wands. The three of wands is seeing the bigger picture of things. 
being at ease in everyday life, seeing things from a higher vantage point, recognizing that, you know, we can, we can look back at the past and see mistakes, turn them into power. We can look to the future um, with excitement. So it's the sun in Aries, the sun meets the emperor. In the recent past, we have the star. The star is healing. So you've gone through this process already. You, for me, this is a second and third filtration. This is like, you know, this is the difference between, and forgive me if you don't understand, um, I mean, I don't understand um, the types because I, I, I was never a spirit drinker. Uh, and forgive me if you don't understand the reference to the uh, supermarket here. But this is the difference between um, Tesco value whiskey and Scottish triple tri uh, triple distilled whiskey. This is you, you're distilling. You just you you cleansing, purifying, getting rid of the so the so the flavour is much more pure. What you want is the hermit. This is your card. You want to be in your power. You want to be master of yourself. You want to shed shine your light for others. And it's one of my favourite combinations. And the fact that they come next to each other star next to the hermit is you are on the right path because the star is what's in the hermit's lantern so you take that healing and you march forward and you help others in whatever way that is you guys rule the sixth house six houses being of service that could just be being kind to people or it could be you are a leader of some kind the hermits you know one of virgo is is is, is spiritually inclined and and um uh, and on the top of their game, they're one of the best spiritual gurus and teachers. You're not the hermit for no reason. That's that's the teacher. That's the, you know, lead by example. What's coming in is the Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords is a kind of um, a trickery in a sense. I kind of see this as strategic. I feel like you know more than what you recognise. Well, you, you, you might be a, a, a clairvoyant, you might be a psychic, you might just be very in tune. And there's, there's an energy of... <sighs> With great power comes great responsibility, uh, Virgo. And it's like you can see a bigger picture here, but you can only share so much, if that makes sense. So, like, you have to remain calm during the chaos of whatever's going around you which could be what the five of the, the seven of swords represents because the five swords are here are being carried away um interestingly in the deck that i'm using afterwards the five of swords is carried away the two swords are, are behind he's looking back and uh, he's about to get caught in some sort of uh, lasso and it's just it's representing here to not focus too much on the past the past is done we've shedded a lot and it's also suggesting here the high priestess in um in the star card because it's the moon in Aquarius. Now the moon in Aquarius will be coming up in the end of August and I believe if memory serves me right is it a blue moon? It, it's possibly a blue moon. I could be wrong. Bear with me. Uh, next blue moon, August 19th, 2024. So August, that will be, yeah, that'll be Aquarius. So this moon in Aquarius is a blue moon. And what do they say? Once in a blue moon. And it's also the, um, in the moonology, is believe in the impossible. So there's something here about believing that you can achieve whatever it is that you can achieve. It's interesting because I'm kind of, if you've, if you've got any sort of connections to, um, Is it Gemini's reading? Yeah, you guys are both ruled by Mercury, so it could just be this this energy of communication, this energy of of, um, of the magician, the alchemy. You know that basing that Mercury energy, because their outcome, the the there was a middle card and then two flanked cards that represented both of their um, zodiac. You've got it here as well. You've got the Sun in um, um, Virgo to the left and the Mercury in Virgo to the right, and slap bang in the middle is the Emperor. Now the Emperor is the leader, the Emperor is power, the Emperor is structure, the Emperor is the boss. 
again, don't get caught up in genders, but this is you stepping into some incredible power when you do whatever it is you do. But it's like you know how to reach that point and you know that not everybody can understand you, not everybody can come with you. And it's, there's an element of needing to be strategic. You know, don't give too much information away. You know, don't, um, you know, not everybody wants to see people succeed, sadly. I, 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 you know, I'd love to say it was the other way around, but it isn't. How you see yourself is the Eight of Swords. Now, the Eight of Swords is Jupiter in Gemini. So the Wheel of Fortune meets the Lovers. You could feel a little bit stuck at the moment, like things aren't quite working out. You know, you might be, you might be overthinking, especially if there's, if this is, if you can see something clearly, um, but it's not playing out yet, there's something that just kind of feels like keeping you stuck. How others see you is the hangman. The hangman, I feel like you've changed. You've done a, you've done a 180. You know, the, um, the hangman is Pisces. Pisces is your opposite sign. Um, you rule the sixth house, Pisces rules the twelfth. And there's something a very, you've completely changed, dramatically changed. You're not the same person you once were because you've gone through the alchemical process. Um, but interestingly, I did a reading for Pisces probably towards the beginning of the year, and it was, I, I, I labelled it as a downside, which it is in a sense, but it's also, a, you know, a wonderful thing. But having the gift of sight, having that gift of clear knowledge, having the gift of being able to see things extremely, you know, far in advance, uh, it can be, not necessarily a curse, but it can be, it can keep us, um, it could keep us stuck waiting for something, but it also, it's kind of like, if people are due to make mistakes and you can see it coming, but it's part of their contract to make that mistake, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's like you, you want to say something, but you can't. And even if you did say something, they can't hear you. And it's, it's stuff like that. So whatever this strategic, it could be about a person, it could be about a job coming up, it could be about something that you know is gonna crash. Uh, I, I don't know, it could be so many different things. But there's just something about maybe keeping things maybe tight to your chest. Your advice is the ace of wands. Literally, let things heat up. This is that, call it, if, we, if we're going into chemistry for this uh, alchemical process, this is you on the bun. Uh, this is you on, in your uh, in your you know your conical flask, and there's the Bunsen burner heating things up. Um, really, let this purification unfold. Let this energy dissipate, because the outcome, like I say, the Eight of Pentacles is your card. It's the Sun in Virgo. This is you emanating your spiritual gold, your soul's purpose. Then the Emperor stepping into massive energy of power, and because of that, you. Uh, operating from the ultimate attainment and you bring in everything you desire. The magician meets the um, hermit. Let's see where the magician is. I also want to see where temperance is as well for that chemical, uh, the alchemy. Yeah, whatever this um, this five of swords represents that the five of swords is, is walking away from, is something that's it might have a hook on you. It could um, it could be something that draws you back. Uh, do check out Cancer's reading this week as well, or especially if you've got Cancer placements, uh, or you might have a lot of transits in the fourth house. The um, That first card was there, and the two of pentacles was in their outcome, and it was about just letting something of the past be done. Ten of Swords. Okay. Magician is with the devil and the two of swords. Yeah, we need to, the, something needs purifying from you because there's still some sort of toxic energies that are at play. It could be self. Let's find it. Nobody's perfect. We all have these little, you know, toxic traits, etc., etc. But it's 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 recognizing them because if we don't recognize them, we don't know they're there. You know what what what's completely normal for somebody growing up is completely horrifying for somebody else. There's you know, this is just a process. So this two of swords that you're looking back on is something to do with maybe a magician and the, and the devil. This could be another person. This could be, you know, where we've manip manipulated in the past. Like again, nobody is perfect. Yeah, I mean, the three of swords, uh, I, I, I wanted to see, but it, this is an even better spread, is with the seven of pentacles and the um, knight of cups. 
And this Knight of Cups is carrying this Ace of Cups, which is the missing piece to go from the Seven to the Eight of Pentacles. And there's that Ace of Pentacles straight afterwards with the Fool. Beautiful. Temperance is with the Tower and the Four of Wands. There's let whatever this is, let, let things shake up, let things heat up because it's going to bring a lot of joy. This is divine intervention. So whatever changes are taking place now, you're protected from it without question. Judgment is here. It's about your process of rebirth. Last card, the Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords is the warrior. Knight of Swords can be the fighter. Interesting, I just want to see where the Knight of Swords is in this deck that I'm using afterwards. Curious. I can't remember what he looks like. be last in this one as well oh, almost okay okay i kind of feel like it's just saying you, your ancestors are protecting you here um lots of energy that are shifting lots of um false people places situations might be trying to bring you down don't let it you're protected um so yeah um to, welcome to your spiritual gold you are uh, you are flying virgo fantastic uh, in your extended, let's look at, what should we look at? We're going to look at this, this what's heating up, what, what needs to bubble away, what, the, what, what needs to cause um, movement so that uh, that last process can happen. So we'll take the energy of the heat, the tower, whatever we want to represent and uh, see what we get. If you enjoy me, fantastic. If not, let me know if it resonates. We have Virgo, we have Aquarius, we have Sun in Aries. We have Saturn in Sagittarius, Moon in Aquarius, Jupiter in Gemini, Pisces, Sun in Virgo, Aries, Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Virgo, Gemini, Jupiter in Libra, Venus in Scorpio, Moon in Sagittarius, Venus in Cancer, Jupiter in Pisces, Cups, Swords, Wands, Pentacles, everyone's here, those of you stand out, take care, let me know, see you soon, bye.